The Reserve Bank of India's move to cut interest rates today, the repo rate and the cash reserve ratio by a quarter percent, comes as a big relief for corporate India, consumers and perhaps even the government. There's been no let up from India's GDP growth which has been slipping consistently and this year we're all set to mark what will be the lowest growth in a decade. All this has been pointing towards pressures that have been building up on the central bank to cut interest rates, if not for a material reason, then certainly to boost sentiment both within the economy and for consumers. But for anyone who believes that an interest rate cut, even by banks over the next few days, will bring in a drop in auto and home loans, this is only going to be a short-lived phenomenon. It is not going to truly put money back in the pockets of people because the government realizes, as does the RBI, that there is not enough room for inflation to be controlled. India's inflation is between 7 to 7.5%, with a forecast from the RBI today of 65 to 7.5%. That said, India will have to start living with this kind of an inflation range because we are continuing to face growth pressures and investment is nowhere around the corner. The three key issues that were today highlighted aside of inflation was the government's focus on investment, a real bid to try and control the current account deficit and overall lift the mood of the nation out of a 5.5% GDP growth rate moving towards recovery uh, towards perhaps 7% growth as well. The important factor that has to be cited is inf investment because at a time when India Inc. has sort of shied away from putting in money in fresh projects or greenfield projects as they're called, there is no trigger for investments to flow in. Foreign direct investment can only be a sliver of the total investment that should come into the economy. But at the same time, the RBI has strictly warned that if fresh investments are not done, then the Indian economy will find it a big struggle to get back on track, irrespective of growth. At the same time, we're also looking at another very important aspect of the economy, which is how will we manage this current account deficit. The current account deficit is actually overflowing. It's been above $22 billion for the quarter ended September of 2012. Exactly what is the government's plan on fixing this? A high inflation doesn't give enough room for rates to be cut in the future and slow investment come back will only add to the woes. The government really has to now move ahead to ensure that stability in policy and a big boost through the budget can help investments and growth get back on track. Only then, RBI will have the flexibility in the future to change or tinker its interest rates given the growth, investment and inflation constraints.